Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Is electricity your friend? Yes, in most cases. It can be a bad enemy, though, if you direct it through electrical wires which have frayed insulation and can result in costly fires. Remember, the electricity in your home should be your servant, not your boss. But careless wiring will help electricity take over. Check the wires on your electrical appliances, lamp cords, and the other items in your home that have electric wires to make sure that the insulation is in good condition and is capable of preventing short circuits and fires. Defective wiring isn't the only way a fire can start in your home, either. Don't permit rubbish or waste paper to accumulate. Clean out your cellar, attic, and closets, and eliminate possible starting places for fires. Almost a thousand fires daily take place in homes across the country, due, in most cases, to carelessness. Be sure your home isn't one of them. Check up and clean up. Don't gamble with fire. The odds are against you. This message is brought to you as a public service. The stranger worked his way through the crowd at the music hall to where Tex Richards, the owner, was standing. Tex, uh, you know a man who calls himself Steve Hall? Steve? Uh, yes, I know him well. Has he been in here tonight? Uh, I haven't seen him. But uh, just a second, here comes Amy Shannon, our star. Do you know if he's been around? Say, Amy. Yes, yes. This gentleman, uh, what's your name, sir? Ben Adams, Mr. Adams, Amy Shannon. How do you do? Hello. He's looking for Steve Hall. Have you seen him tonight? He was here for the first show, but are you a friend of Steve's, Mr. Adams? I'm not in the habit of making friends with pole cats. That's the only name I'd apply to Sid Hawk. Hawk? Who's Sid Hawk? You asked about Steve Hall. Yeah, he called himself Sid Hawk back in San Francisco. Are you sure you have the right man? Yes, I saw him in the lobby of the mansion house tonight. There must be some mistake. There isn't a better like man in Dawson. He's easy to like, I suppose, for those who don't know him. But we do know him. When he made his big strike on Canyon Creek, there wasn't a person in town who wasn't glad of it. So he's made a big strike, huh? Yeah. That proves there's no justice. I don't like the way you're talking about Steve. Forget it, lady. That's impossible. Steve and I are to be married. Sorry to hear that. Just what are you insinuating about Steve? I'm not insinuating. I'm telling you. He killed my father. He's a murderer? He cheated Dad out of a saving. And Dad committed suicide. As far as I'm concerned, it was murder. You've made a terrible mistake. I don't think so. But forget about it. I, I'm sorry I bothered you. Tex, it can't be true, not Steve. He must resemble someone else. I didn't like the look in Ben Adams' eyes. We must do something, convince Adams he's wrong. He's gone now. There's Roy Lang. I'm going to speak to him about it. Excuse me. Roy! Oh, well, Amy, it's nice to see you. Perhaps you'll bring me luck. Let's sit in that booth. There's something I want to ask you. Anything at all, Amy? It's about Steve. No, I should have guessed that. (laughs) There was a man in here just now called Ben Adams. I uh, noticed you talking to him. He was looking for Steve. But he said that Steve was known as Sid Hawk back in San Francisco. And that he was, well, a confidence man. Not ours, Steve. Of course not. It couldn't be. 
But you knew Steve in San Francisco, so I want you to find Ben Adams and tell him he's wrong. But it's you who are wrong, Amy. I, I didn't know Steve in the States. You didn't? We met on the way up. But you were his partner. Until you came into our lives. And he must have told you all about himself, where he lived, where he worked. Amy, he hasn't even told you such things, has he? I've never questioned him. I thought you might have. He never encouraged questions. Well, at least we're sure that he's never been a crook. And we must convince Ben Adams he isn't. Steve can do it himself. Will you go to his cabin and tell him about Adams? Warn him? That man may be dangerous. Well, you'd better find someone else. Why? Because Steve and I aren't... Steve. Why not? And you promised to marry him. He thinks I'm still paying you too much attention. Of all the ridiculous... No, no, no. He's right to be jealous. I still want to marry him. I'd like nothing better than to change your mind. Now we've gone all over that, Roy. I like you and you'll always be one of my best friends. Perhaps if it weren't for Steve... Do you I... see? There's still hope for me. Steve realizes it. That's Oh, what... nonsense, Roy. Will you go and see him for me? I'd rather not. Very well. I shall go myself. <laughs> you have another show. I'll be back in time for it. At least I'll try to be. If I'm not, Tex will understand. You tell him where I've gone. All right, Amy. I'll see you later. Amy went to her dressing room, threw a cloak around her shoulders, but didn't bother with overshoes. And her slippers were soaked in the melting snow before she reached 4th Street. Steve's cabin was dark, but there was a full moon. And she saw a man in front of the cabin and recognized him. It's Ben Adams. I must get a police man. Amy found Constable Downey on Front Street and hurried back to Steve's cabin with him. Did this man threaten Steve, Amy? Not exactly, Constable. But he said Steve was responsible for his father's death. Look, there's a light in the cabin now. He's inside with Steve. You stay behind me, Amy. Yes, Constable. Steve, open up. Roy? Yes. What are you doing here? I decided to follow you. Make sure you didn't get into any trouble. I just arrived. Where's Steve? Not here. And you just opened the door and walked in, Roy? Well, I saw a man hurrying away from here. Ben Adams. No one answered my knock, and so I tried the door. It was unlocked. I wanted to see if Steve was all right, so I came in. And found an empty cabin. That's right. There's a stain on the floor you should take a look at, Constable. Over there. It looks like blood to me. Oh, yes. Oh. Take it easy, Amy. That man killed him. There's no reason to suppose that. The man you saw wasn't carrying a body, was he, Roy? No, he wasn't carrying any. He killed him and dragged him out the back door down into the ravine. Steve's been murdered. Now, Amy, listen to me. That stain's very small. Steve may simply have cut his finger. Somehow I know. I'm sure. He's dead. Roy, you know Ben Adams when you see him? Yes. I'll have a look around here. You take Amy home and come back. We'll find this Ben Adams and question him. Right. Come on, Amy. There's nothing to cry about. The constable made a thorough search of the ravine in back of the cabin, but there was no sign of anybody. When Roy returned, they made a tour of the cafes on Front Street. They found Ben Adams and the El Dorado. Downey took him into one of the corner booths and questioned him. Adams, at the music hall this evening, you told Tex and Amy Shannon that Stephen Hall's right name was Hawks. Sid Hawks. Why, well, I said he's the same man who used to call himself Sid Hawks. After you left the music hall, you went to Steve's cabin. Why, well, yes. What's this all about? What did you do at the cabin? Nothing. I looked in the window. There was no one inside, so I left. What would you have done if Steve had been at home? I don't know. He was responsible for my father's death. And you intended to do something about it. I wanted him to know he's driven Dad to suicide. But if you're worried about me trying to even the score, you can forget it. I just wanted to tell him that in my books, he's a murderer. You didn't enter the cabin at all? No. Say something happened to him? I'm not sure. If something has, you'll be wanted for further questioning. Downey made a complete report to the sergeant at headquarters. When he had finished... There was no sign of a struggle in the cabin, Jim? No, sergeant. Only the stain on the floor. Well, you're right. King should be able to find Steve wherever he is. We'll take over. You'd better get some sleep. Right, sergeant. Come on, King. Work to be done. <laughs> The sergeant went over every inch of the cabin. There were a number of muddy footprints on the floor, too many to lead to any conclusion. Underneath the cot, he found a strong box. Heavy, King. Probably full of gold dust. The lock hasn't been tampered with. There's been no robbery. Well, let's take a look at his clothes and find something to give you the scent. Huh, oh, this will do. Steve's negative. Get the scent, King. Find him, boy. <laughs> 
King started for the door. And at that moment, it swung open. A man stood in the doorway. King slipped past him to wait for the sergeant in the street. But the sergeant had stopped. Steve. The man's clothes were plastered with mud. And there was a strange light in his eyes. He stumbled a little as he entered the cabin and sank into a chair. Hey, King. Come back, boy. Well, what's the matter, Steve? What happened to you? Nothing. Your clothes. Oh, I fell down and slipped. It's mud and slush. Did you want to see me about something? Just seeing you is enough. I don't understand. Amy's been worried. Amy Shannon? Of course. Why should she be worried? A man called Ben Adams was looking for you this evening. Yeah? You know him? No. Never heard the name. Well, he seemed to think he knew you. And accused you of swindling his father. Amy saw him hanging around here and brought Constable Downey. The man was gone, but they found a blood stain on the floor over there. It's nothing. I cut myself shaving. Well, I suggest that you change your clothes and go see Amy. As for this Ben Adams, you and I'll call on him tomorrow. And get this matter of a mistaken identification straightened out. He must have known my brother Sid. Your brother? I imagine he swindled people in his time. I wouldn't put anything past him after tonight. Tonight? He's here in Dawson? He was here. Sergeant, I killed him. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, picture yourself at the ball game right now. The bases are loaded with two outs. The star hitter steps up and you see him in person. You get the thrill of seeing him hit that homer. Get in on the fun. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Yes, you can go free if you are 12 years or younger and bring a paying adult like mom or dad. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Paco 10. The tickets tell you the names of the teams and the dates. Bring the whole family and have the time of your lives at the ballpark. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat or Puff rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. After the mud-plastered miner had made his startling confession, he buried his head in his hands. You killed your brother? Do you realize what you're saying, man? Yes. I just... Just give me a moment, and I'll tell you all about it. Your twin brother. That's right. His name is... was Sid. I hadn't seen him for years until tonight. He just arrived. Well, why did you kill him? It was self-defense, believe me. Perhaps you'd better consult a lawyer before you say anything more. I mean to tell you the whole truth. What have you done with the body? Uh, I should have come to you right away. The body, Steve. I doubt if you'll ever recover it. When I saw what I'd done, I was afraid. I took the body down to the Yukon. I found a hole in the ice. I forced him under. The current will carry him downstream underneath the ice. On into Alaska. The spring breakup will be coming any hour now. I doubt if you'll ever find him. Well, you can't be accused of murder until we do. I want to be accused. I want to stay in trial. I want to prove to the whole world I killed in self-defense. We must first prove someone's been killed. Arrest me, Sergeant. In view of your confession, you'll be booked for investigation of murder. If and when the body's recovered, you'll be tried. And I hope you do find it. Find it soon. Better change your clothes. Then we'll go to headquarters. Right. Steve's confession created a sensation in Dawson. But it was nearly a month after the breakup, the body he had forced under the ice was found. Sergeant Preston took Steve to Circle City in Alaska Territory to identify him. <laughs> King howled dismally when the blanket was thrown back. Impossible to identify him. No, Sergeant. Put the chain and locket around his neck. You'll find the initials on it are M.G., my mother's initials. Inside the locket, you'll find a miniature painted on ivory, my mother's picture. She gave it to Sid just before she died. He was always her favorite son. 
I have another picture of it home. You'll see. That's my mother's picture in the lot. It was a strange murder trial. There wouldn't have been one if Steve hadn't insisted on it. For well, the prosecution had to call on the defendant to identify the deceased. Then, after introducing Steve's confession, the crown rested, and the defendant took the stand. He spoke quietly, obviously making a supreme effort to control himself. But his voice broke when he reached the climax of his story. I offered... I offered to sit a job at regular wages. Sixteen dollars a day. He laughed at me, pulled a gun from his pocket. He said, I don't want your job, I want your claim. I said, have you gone crazy? He said, no, there's no one in this world can tell you and me apart. I'm taking your place, brother. From now on, I'll be Steve Hall and you'll be dead. His gun was leveled directly at my heart and I knew he meant to kill me. I decided to take a chance. I grabbed for the gun and caught his wrist. He was surprised. He tried to pull free and as he did, he squeezed the trigger. The muzzle of the gun was pointing at his own heart. That's so all. He was dead when he hit the floor. There was no cross-examination. The jury required only ten minutes to reach its verdict. We find the defendant not guilty. Good, good. Steve left Dawson that same day. And so did King and the sergeant on their first spring patrol to the north. It was a week later when they returned to headquarters, and Sergeant sat down at his desk to make out his report. He opened a drawer. There was a neckerchief on top of the papers. Steve. I put it in my pocket that night and never returned it. King, who was lying at his master's feet, caught the scent of the neckerchief and growled. The scent was familiar. The Sergeant had told him to find the man the neckerchief belonged to. And then King remembered. The man had been found, and the man was dead. King lifted his head and howled. And then he dropped his head to his paws again. But the sergeant was staring at him. King, it's only death that makes you howl like that. This night is it, doesn't it? Oh, of course, Johnny. Hello, sergeant. It's good to see you. It's been a long time. Oh, winter. You didn't pay us a visit once. But I'm to be stationed here from now on. Fine. Well, hello. Did Connors make you a present of his neckerchief? Who's Connors? Detective Connors from the San Francisco Police. He came through the pass early in April. He was looking for a confidence man named uh, Sid Hawks. You say this neckerchief belonged to Detective Connors? He was wearing it, or one just like it. I referred him to you, Sergeant. Did he ever get here? I think he did, Johnny. King. <laughs> King looked up into his master's face, trying to understand his words. I remember, King. That night when you and I were in Steve's cabin, I picked up this neckerchief from the top of the chest of drawers and took it for granted it belonged to Steve. I let you smell it, boy. And I told you to find the owner. But when Steve came in, you went straight past him and out into the street, waiting for me to follow you. You were going after Detective Connors. Well, what's this all about? Johnny, I'm practically certain that Detective Connors is dead. And that a man named Sid Hawks, who's been calling himself Steve Hall, killed him. Huh? Killed him, then put a locket around his neck. Pushed him underneath the ice, trusting to the river to make it impossible to identify the body except for the locket. Then Steve could testify the locket belonged to his twin brother. A brother who probably doesn't exist. Oh, Johnny, we've been fooled royally, but there's one comforting thought. Murder will out. Come on, King. Where are you going? To find Steve Hall, alias Sid Hawks, to arrest him for the second time on suspicion of murder. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Here's to wind up the pitch, the bases are loaded, and... It's a two-bagger, and the game's tied up! Say, kids, come out to the ballpark as guest of a major or minor league team. Right now, you can see baseball games free if you are 12 years or younger. Just bring a paying adult like mom or dad, and you can get your free ticket immediately. No mailing, no waiting. Free baseball tickets are right inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. In Quaker Pack 10, you get two free tickets. Names of the teams and dates of the games are on every ticket. 
Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals Mom gets, the more free baseball tickets you get. So tell Mom you want to eat lots of Quaker Pop wheat or Pop rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. And just think of the fun you'll have at the ball game, seeing real star players in person and cheering for home runs. Now to continue. The sergeant soon learned that Steve Hall was still at Canyon Creek. What he didn't learn was that Amy Shannon had rented a horse earlier that morning and had ridden up to the creek. She rode slowly, thinking of many things. It was afternoon when she drew rain on the high banks of Canyon Creek in front of Steve's cabin. Steve? The appearance of the man who opened the door shocked Amy. He needed a shave and his eyes were bloodshot. There were deep lines etched across his forehead and down his cheeks. Steve. What do you want? Told you not to come up here. The way you look proves I was right in coming. You can't come in. Oh, yes, I can. I said you couldn't come in. I'm in now. Oh, dear, just just look at this place. I haven't cleaned up much. I haven't been feeling well. You don't have to tell me that. What's wrong? These bottles. You gave up drinking. I can change my mind about it, can I? Oh, of course, but don't you realize that if you want to, if you have to drink, that it's wrong for you to be alone? This is no way to forget. And if you told the truth on the stand, there's nothing for you to forget. If I told the truth... Listen, it's about some, something we got settled. What? I don't want anyone interfering with my life. I'm not interfering. I'm trying to help. It amounts to the same thing. I've decided it was all a mistake. You and me? We're through. Finished. Is that clear? Yes, please. Everything is clear now. You're afraid of me. What gives you that idea? Your eyes. You're hoping that I've forgotten something, and you're afraid I haven't. And you're right to be afraid, Steve, because a girl doesn't forget when a man promises her a present. I never promised you anything. Your mother's locket. You lie. Show me two lockets, Steve. The one you promised me and the one they found on your brother. I never said anything about a locket. A bracelet. There is only one man. You had it, and you put it around the dead man's neck. Was he your brother, or was he someone else? Shut up! Someone who knew you as Sid Hawks, perhaps. <laughs> now, you're smarty. You are Sid Hawks. It's too bad you're so smarty. Now, you're going to be sorry. Who was the man you killed? A detective. Why shouldn't I tell you? You'll never tell anyone else. I'll tell the whole world. No, you don't. Let go of me. Shut up! Oh! No time like the present to get rid of you. You wouldn't dare. There are plenty of people in Dawson who know I came out here today. There are a lot of accidents on the canyon trail, too. When they find you, that's what they'll figure. It was an accident. So Saunders' cabin isn't far from here. Let go of me or I'll scream for help. You won't open your mouth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You'll scream, will you? I'm going to put you in the cot. Now then, over your face... No stains on the floor this time. Tonight I'll drop you over the edge of the canyon. Where's that pillow? I see it. Now, a good thing you're out, sister. This pillow's too dirty for your taste. But then the dirt wouldn't bother you for long. <laughs> Who's that? The door's unbarred. The man was still bent over the still form of the girl when the door burst open. The next second, the sergeant was beside him and it pulled him to his feet. There's only one treatment for your kind. Watch him, King. Don't let him move. As King stood guard over the killer, the sergeant went to work reviving Amy. It was several minutes before she groaned and opened her eyes. Oh. You're all right, Amy. Sergeant Preston. What? He tried to kill me. Yes, we saw him. What brought you here? An idea King gave me and a visit from Constable Redding of White Pass. A San Francisco detective started up to Dawson early in April. He was looking for Sid Hawks. Sergeant, Steve is Sid Hawks, and the man he killed was a detective. He admitted it just before he hit me and started... You'll to... never have another chance to kill. Oh. On your feet, Hawks. No. I have no intention of hitting you again. You're under arrest and the charge is murder. You can't try me again. I know the law. I've been tried once and I was acquitted. You were tried for the murder of a non-existent twin brother. Now you'll be tried for the murder of Detective Connors. This time, the verdict will be guilty, and when you've paid for your crime with your life, 
This case will be closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Some of the most popular people you know are waiting for you on Mutual every Sunday. They're on hand to bring you their good company wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do. Just turn your radio dial to your Mutual station and join the famous master detective Nick Carter on a suspense-filled case. For stirring and heartwarming tales of the Old West, a boy and his dog... There are the adventures of Rin Tin Tin. And more hard-riding, fast-shooting frontier exploits are brought to you by the ever-popular Western hero Wild Bill Hickok. You can thrill to the operations of big city law enforcement with the public prosecutor. And the famous journalist Bob Considine presents colorful news sidelights in an easy-to-listen-to column of the air. You will enjoy yourself more when you let your mutual friends keep you company every Sunday. Hear them every week over most of these stations. When crooks operating around 30 Mile evaded capture and continued to terrorize the people, Sergeant Preston headed toward the town to help round up the gang. Well, King, we'll soon be in 30 Mile. We'll do all we can to... A bullet from ambush has knocked Sergeant Preston from the saddle. Will he survive and manage to track down his would-be killer... Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. Mm-hmm.